earliest Chinese painting, um, according to the archaeologist uh, discovery, uh, is painted on silk. Even today, professional artists still use silk to paint, if um, you can afford it. Later, with the invention of uh, paper, um, the cost become less expensive. And uh, mulberry paper is made of the bark fiber of a uh, mulberry tree. Uh, the, the leaves are fit the, the more, uh, mulberry worms uh, to produce silk, and the, the bark actually can be uh, regrown after harvested. Uh, you don't have to kill the tree, by the way. Uh, become uh, the major material for uh, mulberry paper. The major um, advantage of uh, mulberry paper is very strong as silk. Uh, you won't uh, break it with a uh, wet wash or even you know, uh, crumbling techniques. Um, and also, it's very delicate as silk, very smooth uh, for color and ink. Uh, you, you, however, if you favor f uh, fiber, we also have different uh, uh, lengths of fiber. You have uh, very uh, smooth kind of uh, fine fiber of mulberry paper, we call it mulberry number one, which is included in the student pack. Uh, we also have long strands of fiber in a kind of paper called the clouds, uh, dragon clouds. Uh, it's a kind of uh, long fibered mulberry paper. It has long, uh, uh, strong texture, good for, for landscape painting and also for animal painting. Today, um, in China, the pa painting paper are still made by uh, hand and uh, uh, commonly using uh, the material from uh, mulberry, bamboo, uh, rice straw, hemp, as well as uh, cotton fibers. The best known uh, Chinese painting paper is called the Xuan paper. It's named after the county uh, in Anhui province. The Xuan paper can be divided into three categories. The, uh, according to the absorbency, uh, absorbent, non-absorbent, and semi-absorbent. Uh, absorbency is controlled by a chemical kind of uh, uh, paper size. It's known as uh, uh, alum. The unsized Xuan or raw Xuan uh, is uh, very absorbent and smearing. The size uh, treated with alum solution is uh, less smearing, and uh, um, the semi size strain is something in between. Uh, and the, the, this middle group, uh, uh, semi sized uh, uh, absorbency, can be achieved uh, uh, not only by alum uh, solution or size, but also by uh, combined two. Uh, sheets together, pressed you know, two sheets together to form what we call double strand or even triple strand uh, to reduce uh, the smearing but increase the absorbency, uh, remain, uh, maintain the absorbency but reduce the smearing. Um, also, uh, there are colored papers. These uh, colors are, are treated you know, uh, with uh, dyes. These are also semi-sized. Uh, they can be bubbled or uh, what, uh, how to say, with uh, golden flakes or antique colored. Uh, these colored papers are usually semi-sized. The beauty of Chinese painting depends on the uh, how you master the nature of smearing or bleeding. If you control it well by speed, by the amount of moisture in the brush, uh, when you load the brush, uh, you will learn these uh, details in a later class and uh, you will control and master, uh, you, you will learn the skill of uh, uh, painting on rice paper and you will really enjoy this, I hope. Uh, so the key point is uh, to paint quickly and uh, without any uh, hesitation. So to paint quickly without any hesitation is the key to paint well on rice paper, and this requires some practice. If you uh, are scared of bleeding uh, and uh, smearing, I totally understand. 
So that's why I suggest you start from the semi size chain or more berry paper. Those are less smeary and bleeding. So once you get used to the strokes, you can uh, move on to more professional grades of uh, rice paper, the single shine, uh, spontaneous style. Uh, um, other paper materials including uh, ma or hemp paper and uh, bamboo uh, yuan shu paper. Those are uh, good for either beginner or advanced uh, students, uh, and you can read uh, or search for the you know the in the product uh, description for information about each paper. Um, I don't want to confuse you by this uh, overall re review, and I'd like to introduce you next the recommended material, uh, including in the student starter kit. Uh, the value pack um, next. Here's the starter kit. Um, we included the three kind of papers: the mulberry paper, uh, the shuan or raw uh, unsized uh, rice paper, and the semi shuan, uh, semi sized shuan paper. So. Um, I have tested in the demo that uh, released it before the class. Um, you can review that if you haven't seen that. Okay, these are the most uh, representative paper. Uh, after you master this, tested these three, you'll know what I'm talking about, about other papers uh, in each, uh, under each product or each paper description. So, uh, just you know, try these three before you do the others. It's good for you to get start. Uh, you will try the most absorbent one, the most smearing one. Don't get scared. You get you will like it. And the, the semi sized one that would, you will use for most of the uh, assignments. And uh, for landscape, we use the mulberry paper. <coughs> okay. After you got your new brushes. Uh, you need to soak it to open the brush before using for the f first time. It comes with the uh, when the brush is uh, uh, new. It comes with the plastic caps. Uh, they're they're uh, not useful after open after the first use. So just throw this away. Uh, do not keep them. You will not be able to put it back after the brush is uh, opened. Um, to open the brush, use, uh, use uh, some water. Don't use a whole glass of uh, water. Just enough to put the, the brush uh, head inside the water. Because the bamboo brush, not, not this uh, water brush, this is plastic. The bamboo brush uh, handle is very vulnerable sometimes. Uh, so you, if you dig in the water for too long, it will cause cracking. So uh, I always use only this much water to wash my brush. So uh, do not use uh, too much water and uh, immerse your brush handle in, in the water because uh, this will cause not only to uh, damage to the brush handle causing the bamboo handle to crack also could uh, uh, you know cause the inst uh, accidents because the water on the handle can dripping down when you paint especially when you do a small detail and suddenly there's a drip of water come down from the handle that would be terrible uh, okay do not keep the brush head do not immerse the brush head in the water for too long. No more than five minutes, I would say. You only take one to two minutes uh, to soak it. And uh, you can use your fingertip to rub the brush head or to squeeze it to get the uh, glue out. In The best I do it is on the tap water, you know, raining water. So you can uh, open the brush with your your, your fingertips. Do not put it in the water for uh, hours and then it will become a hair losing brush. Um, 
don't you know that's very important remember uh, so the second uh, um, use uh, or maintain instruction uh, is that uh, uh, always clean the brush after each use right away do not wait to the ink dry on the brush um, and uh, after cleaning in rainy water you use a, a piece of paper towel or wasted rice paper you know, to absorb the moisture and uh, make the brush um, in the into the original shape uh, then lay it uh, flat or put on a uh, brush rest uh, to dry uh, do not put in a brush holder like this immediately with the wet brush because the moisture will come down um, into the uh, handle and cause the handle and the uh, decay of the glue in the, the heel of the brush because it's, the good brush always have a hidden part inside the handle uh, that gives more uh, reservoir and the power uh, to hold the brush so um, never dry it vertically, dry, hand it the best this uh, is a brush rack you, you can have it later if you don't have it right now uh, you can make it yourself, uh, some uh, artists may do that um, to hand dry it with the brush head downwards so the moisture comes down air dry it. Uh, do not put in the direct sunshine uh, because the, uh, the sunshine will also cause the bamboo handle to crack. The third point to remember uh, for maintaining uh, uh, the brush, uh, keep the brush in good shape, also very important um, to make a good painting is that uh, you always uh, soak the brush in the water like uh, this one uh, so every time before you use a dry brush, uh, wet it by dipping it in the water for a few seconds and then uh, dry it with a piece of uh, paper towel. Uh, you can do this to squeeze out the extra moisture to make the brush you know, thirsty so you can, load, you can load with ink or color. If the brush is full of uh, water, you cannot load more uh, ink into it. So make the brush thirsty. Maybe just uh, the front half, uh, leave the moisture in the heel. So this, by doing so, the ink will never enter the the hidden heel, uh, even the the bottom, you know, the visible bottom of the brush. So you can always keep the brush clean in the bottom. Uh, never dip the brush right inside the ink bottle uh, you know the dry brush inside the dip, dip, uh, dipped in the ink bottle will make the brush very hard to clean because the ink will uh, absorb all the way inside the handle you can never change that that's why we should always separate the color or even you know uh, I mean, the, the, especially the white color brush from the ink brush, never mix them up because if you use ink, um, the ink will stay there. Uh, but uh, if you wet the brush and then use ink just only in the front half, you can always clean and keep the brush as white as this. Uh, so remember, um, wet the brush with water first, then uh, load ink or color. Uh, if you do get your brush, uh, you know, uh, dirty, you can use the. If you want to clean the brush and uh, make it, uh, you know, keep it white, uh, you can wash it with a little bit uh, shampoo. Uh, I use my dark shampoo. That's uh, up to you. You can also use human shampoo. Uh, I don't think you need to use conditioners in this case. Just a little. Because the Chinese brush, or the brushes we uh, carry are all made of uh, natural hair. So uh, shampoo is good for the brush uh, to clean the brush if you uh, want to get rid of the, uh, the dye you know, from the painting. So um, that's a small tip to try. Okay. Um,
other than the four treasures of uh, um, artist studio, you also need some other uh, utensils or accessories like a brush holder, uh, a brush rest, and uh, a palette, a ceramic, ceramic palette. You can use any um, dish uh, saucers or dish plate, um, if you will. The, don't use plastic ones because they don't. Uh, the color won't spread on it. Like the the one time uh, plastic plates won't work. Um, the and for wash uh, brush washer, you can use a vase or a big bowl. But uh, you know, don't put too much water as I discussed earlier. Just use half of it. And this also give you room to rinse. You know, if you have a full jar, you cannot rinse. Uh, the most important, remember, is to not get the handle wet. That will cause a lot of problems. Only the brush head, okay, when you wash the brush during painting. We talked about, uh, we have the uh, felt pad in, uh, with the uh, starter kit, but you can also use uh, um, other materials. Uh, up to you, but no, don't use uh, newspaper, that's no good because it's sticking with, on the rice paper when it's wet. Um, don't use any absorbent paper underneath it, no paper towel, please. The last thing is uh, the paper weight. You can use a stone if you like, or anything with weight to uh, hold the rice paper when you paint so they will not move. Uh, we don't do stretching with tape like a watercolor, but we do mount. Uh, the mounting is very important uh, uh, last touch to finish a uh, Chinese painting on rice paper because that will uh, make the wrinkles and the waves flat to flatten the paper. Uh, so don't be afraid that if you got some uh, you know uh, wrinkles or crumpled uh, you know. Um, on the paper when you receive, uh, because uh, that's no, no, it doesn't matter. You, after you paint it, you can even fold it, because uh, eventually, before you frame, you need to mount it to frame uh, to flatten it with uh, either dry or wet mounting. I will use uh, silicone paper. Uh, you can see my YouTube demo. Uh, I have a playlist to, to show you how to mount. Uh, uh, Chinese painting, which is not part of this class, but uh, it's very important information to know. So you will not be afraid of uh, wrinkles and the waves. <clears throat> so don't worry about uh, wrinkles or uh, creases. Uh, in my advanced class, uh, I hope uh, I, I will uh, continue uh, after this one. I'll teach you how to use the uh, crumble technique. Uh, so you crumble the paper and paint on wrinkled uh, rice paper. Then you flatten it right away with a piece of, of uh, silicone paper and uh, on, on the back, uh, you know, to back it. And with an uh, iron, you can you can make it flat. Um, so that's all for today. And I wish you uh, enjoy this class very much. Thank you. Goodbye.